Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog, and here we are with episode 681 on Venom Day. That's uh, kind of been a last minute addition, like I think on Friday they were just like, hey, let's just call Monday Venom Day, because I think they did another screening in New York today for fans and, you know, probably some press and everything like that. So I'm sure over the next few days we'll probably hear more people talking about it. Hopefully no one spoils anything major, but you know, so just so you guys know, if you don't want to get spoiled, just be careful, tread carefully. Obviously, anything that deals with major spoilers here on this channel, I'm going to mark it on the videos, and I won't put anything in the thumbnail that even alludes to it. I'll just find some random image of Venom, and I'll use those as the thumbnails, so that way I don't even allude to what the spoiler could even be just by looking at the thumbnail. And I'll try not to title my titles of the episodes anything that will be spoilery either, just to so you have the choice. You can see the spoiler warning, and you can avoid it if you want to. Um, for me, no, nothing major is going to get spoiled for me at this point, uh, but you know, for you guys, I'm just trying to look out for you. So I'll try to keep this spoiler free, because I know the movie's coming out in a few days here in the U.S., but it's going to be releasing in a few weeks in other parts of the world and even a, another month and a half in other parts of the world. So it's it's tough and I hope you all, you know, can stay, you know, hang in there and hopefully nothing major gets spoiled for you. And I'll do my best to avoid that on the channel or at least label something so you know to skip those episodes and come back after you see the movie. So to in order to like not talk about spoilers and movie stuff, I wanted to on Venom Day here cover an issue that was coincidentally next in line anyway, but it was kind of our first major milestone with Venom. Because they never really, you know, celebrated Venom when he hit issue 100. It wasn't until issue 150 that they started going back to legacy numbering on a lot of their comic books. And they looked at Venom and they said, well, if we add up all of these books, it looks like we have 150 Venom issues. So I'll throw up the cover gallery there. These are the covers or the books that they consider to be the first 149 issues of Venom before this issue came out. And so we had, you know, everything from Lethal Protector 1 through 6, um, all the way through, through to, you know, the Madness and all that stuff, all the 90s stuff. Uh, but then, they you know, you notice they skipped Venom vs. Carnage, the miniseries, and Venom vs. Hulk, which was the mail-away Charleston Chew book, I think it was. Those make sense to skip to me because that book is called Venom vs. Someone Else. It's not Venom colon whatever the story is called, you know. And, and it seems like that was kind of their logic when it came to numbering these. Uh, sure, it's also convenient logic because they were probably like, oh, if we count those, then we got to say this is issue 155 and we don't want to do that just yet. We want to make it a nice, you know, we want to get to issue 150. So we'll just say that the ones that are called Venom versus something, those don't count. But I think there was one or two other ones someone mentioned that might not have been, you know, considered for this. But I'm sure there was some kind of internal logic, whether we agree with it or not, you know, that's up for debate. But it seems like there was some internal logic for it. And the main thing was if it was a book called Venom colon something that was considered, or if it was just a solo book called Venom, like the Daniel Way stuff, um, or the Rick Remender stuff, and Colin Bunn stuff. So that leads us to here, we had the Lee Price uh, six issues that led us up to this point. Eddie was working for the government after the whole carnage fiasco on the island with the Darkhold, and now he has possession of the symbiote again. So this is where the book picks up. So that's why I thought, hey, this will be great for Venom Day, because it's kind of like a, a little bit of a recap, but also a rebirth of their relationship and a, kind of a milestone in the comic books for, for us as Venom fans. Because for years up until this point, we didn't have Eddie Venom anymore. Um, that was like maybe like 10 years at this point without Eddie Brock as Venom. And so we we get Eddie back in this issue. So, or we got him back in the last issue, uh, issue six, but this is his first, uh, you know, uh, I guess adventure with his suit again. So uh, this issue starts off and it does a recap, which you normally would do in a milestone book or things like that. Donny Cates obviously did it. I feel like Donny Cates always did it poorly because he would always only, you know, do the uh, recap of his book. He wouldn't really dive back into the lore of Venom too much. He would just spend like eight or nine pages recapping the stuff that's already happened in his book. And it's like, dude, you've only written like 30 issues of Venom or 20 issues of Venom on some of these before the recap. Why are you spending nine pages to recap 20 issues? Like if you're going to spend nine pages on a recap, like do a whole flashback book and go all the way back to the beginning and, and, and recap everything. But, you know, he, to me, he was always kind of lazy about that kind of stuff. So this I like because it's a two-page recap. It starts off with, you know, the symbiote talking and uh, quoting the Heart of Darkness. And then it goes into like, you know, two-page or a big splash page, remembering everything of Eddie's life. It shows Eddie, you know, the suit going to Spider-Man, separating from him, going to Eddie, then going to Matt Gargan, and then obviously eventually Flash Thompson. And it shows the suit moving around uh, to Lee Price. Uh, getting that anger back, going to Clintar, getting cleansed, the Life Foundation symbiotes, all the way back to leading to this moment here. So even if you weren't reading the books, uh, you know, with, with Lee Price, issues one through six, 
when you got issue 150, you didn't feel like you missed too much of a beat. And honestly, you weren't. The, the Lee Price stuff isn't that great. Uh, but this is written by Mike Costa, who did write the Lee Price stuff. And it's drawn by Trad Moore, whose art I really, really like. I, I love his style. Um, he's done stuff with Donny Cates, even with Silver Surfer Black. And he's just got a really unique style. And so it works for characters like Spider-Man and Venom, who swing and move around the city and are very, you know, animated and stuff. Uh, he does a great job with them. So that's what we have here. We have that recap. And then it's, you know, Eddie waking up from a nightmare. And he's, all those memories were flooding through his mind. So it wasn't just a recap for the reader's sake, but it was also you know, flooding through with Eddie, which is great because that's kind of the power of the symbiote is that it can transfer memories. So it was almost like this is Eddie having that transfer, you know, re rehab, you know, happen again, I guess, or recur. And, uh, and so he gets up, he goes over to the window and he's kind of like, okay, I forgot that this was what it's like to be with this thing. Uh, you know, cause last time I had it, I was, I had cancer, I was dying and I was ready to get rid of it. And then I became anti-venom and I've been cured of all those ailments. And now I'm back to physical, you know, uh, physique, Eddie Brock like I'm in my peak now and now I have the suit back but I forgot what it was like mentally to be with this thing so one thing I will say about that is that it seems like Mike Costa he's trying to write the suit as like this ex-lover thing and that's kind of his approach to it and you can definitely take that approach with Venom for sure with with the uh, relationship between Eddie and the symbiote I feel like it's a little too on the nose sometimes like I like it being ambiguous where it's like Okay, are, you know, so people, so, so fans can interpret it in a way they want to, where it's like, oh, are, are they partners, like, you know, cops or, you know, detectives or something? Are they like that? Um, or are they, you know, intimate or not intimate, but like, are they more like a, a relationship kind of thing on that level? Is it a friendship? Like, I feel like ambiguous is the way to go with this, because as soon as you define it, uh, in my eyes, it, it kind of takes away from fans who look at it a different way, you know, to an extent. And sometimes I don't like ambiguity when it comes to these things, but I think it works really well with Venom because there's so many types of Venom fans that uh, that I think it's just an easier way to kind of appease everyone if you don't just kind of say it's one thing or you know or another um, but anyway that's what Mike kind of how he approaches it so that's I think one of the reasons why I kind of railed against his take the first time I read this run where I was like uh, I, I get it but do they have to call each other lover and all that I think that's defining it too much to be like a different kind of relationship whereas ambiguity like I said for me I think worked a little better for the character but to each their own. I mean, some of you out there may like that, that he defined it, so that's fine. Um, but what it is, is that you have this relationship that's starting to rebuild, but the suit has just come from Lee Price, so it was cleansed, and I guess one human being, Lee Price, had the power to corrupt the suit again, so that just shows me how insanely fragile these symbiotes are, if just, you know, a couple days with Lee Price, no matter how twisted he is, but a couple days with him completely undid all that cleansing of the suit, it just that seems like a little convenient story wise um but uh but i think that's what's going on is if you look at the first arc with lee price if if this is the journey of the symbiote the symbiote is trying to be a hero again and after leaving flash it's kind of uh lost what that meant and so this is it trying to find its way back to the term hero but also bringing eddie for the ride who does also want to be a hero especially after her the heroic sacrifices he made while being anti-venom, you know, saving Spider Island or people from Spider Island. So, so I, I know what Mike Cost is going for here, but it's still just like, I don't, I, I just, I wish it wasn't as clearly defined to an extent, but that's part of his journey. So for now, I'll, I'm, you know, until I reread the next few books, like I, I'll just kind of put a pin in that for now, because uh, I kind of just went on a rant about it. So what's happening here now is the suit is uh, you know, it, taking Eddie out, it's like, hey, do you want to go out for a spin? And he's like, yeah, sure, let's go. And they go out and they find some criminals or some people, you know, doing a and e breaking and entering. And Eddie goes down to stop them. And as he's fighting them, he realizes that they're not really terrorists, uh, maybe eco-terrorists. They're trying to save like a, a tomato, like, a, like a, you know, they're, they're more green. You know, they're, they're trying to save the environment in some way. They need this plant or, you know, tomato or whatever they need it for. But they're not like hurting anybody. And they, they went in when the, there was no one working. There's no security there because why would anyone just break in to steal like some kind of scientific experiment on a tomato, you know, just to grow a bigger tomato or whatever they're looking for. It's, it's a pretty... I mean, it's a crime still, but it's not like a lethal crime where anyone's going to die. No innocents are at stake here. So when Eddie realizes that after he beat the crap out of these guys because the suit told him to, he's like, look, Eddie, bad guys, let's go beat them up. And he did it without even really thinking or questioning the suit. 
And then he sees that he beat up all these guys who probably didn't deserve it. So that sends Eddie through an emotional uh, roller coaster where it ends up leading him back to the church where he first found the, the suit at. Like he's just wandering through New York and he ends up back at this church. So I kind of like that because I've wandered around New York before and you do. Sometimes you just end up in places that, you know, maybe fate you know meant you to go there or whatever. So Eddie's sitting in the pew trying to kind of pray, but not really. He just wants to be left alone. He's trying to think. He's talking to the suit. And these like gangbangers show up and Eddie threatens them um, without even turning into Venom. And they go, fine, whatever, we're getting out of here, man. And they leave. And then a priest comes out and he says, hey, thanks for doing that. I usually hide in the back at this time of night because, you know, uh, I usually have uh, drug dealers or people, gang members come in, hang out for a little bit, and then they leave. Um, but they're, they're always threatening. And he's like, so I usually just stay back here and mind my own business. And Eddie's like, where is everyone? Why, you know, the, the church is empty. And he's like, uh, back when I used to come here, it was usually full, even at this time of night, there'd be people in here praying. And the priest said, yeah, he's like, it's funny, like ever since that Galactus guy showed up a couple of years ago for the first time, because obviously the comic, you know, they have to condense the time period. For us, it was decades, uh, but uh, but for them, it was only a couple of years. And he's like, ever since that Galactus guy showed up, you know, no one really comes to church anymore. He's like, I've, everyone kind of disappeared. Once aliens started attacking the world on a weekly basis, he goes, no one really had any faith of a higher being anymore. Um, and I kind of like that. I like that it, that's addressed, like the, the idea of this priest uh, or padre saying like, uh, you know, wow, this Galactus guy showed up and everyone's faith in God kind of changed, you know, um, and they maybe still have it, but they just don't come to church to show it. And I just thought that was a really interesting look at religion in the Marvel Universe and how people um, like maybe, you know, perceive it or, or how they continue to show faith or, the, their, you know, don't show faith. I just thought there was a neat like window into that. Uh, you know, that side of that corner of uh, people's psyche, because obviously um, I wonder what that would be like if a, a, something like Galactus showed up, stood on our planet and threatened to eat it. And then a Silver Surfer guy showed up to stop him and help with the Fantastic Four and the Avengers and they defeat Galactus and he goes away. What do you do? Like, I, I don't know. Some people might still go to church afterwards and thank God that there are superheroes, um, but there's also probably collateral damage. So they'll probably not go you know to church because they'll think they were being punished in some way so i don't know it just it was just a neat little window into that and it, they don't get too deep into it which I, I i like but they talk about it enough to where i was like you know i never thought of that i never thought of galactus showing up and then a bunch of people who maybe are on like a on the fence on religion you know or, or whatever maybe they're not like as devout you know but they might see that and go oh okay i'm, I'm not going to church anymore um, I don't know. I just thought that was neat. So I like that Mike Costa put that in here. But what's really happening in the scene is that the Padre is kind of probing Eddie. He's like, what's going on? Why are you here? You're clearly a dangerous man. And Eddie's like, yes, but I don't want to hurt people. You know, I don't want to hurt innocent people, at least. Um, I had a life once and then me and this uh, partner I had, we split our ways and I went down a, a, a bad path. But then I found my way back to the light because I'm not really religious anymore. He goes, uh, but, you know, with everything I've been through. So it kind of sounds like Eddie's a product of maybe seeing too much, you know, of aliens and stuff like that to, to kind of, he's starting to lose his faith a little bit. But the Padre does say, I think it's still in there because why else would you end up at this church? Um, this particular one, this one that you have a connection to in the past with. And he goes, so I don't know what it is with this partner of yours, but I'm going to say that it's probably not good that you're with this partner again because they might be bringing out your old bad habits. And Eddie's like, you know what? I, I don't want to talk about it right now. And the suit is kind of confused. It's like, I hear what he's saying, but is he saying I'm a bad influence on you, Eddie? He's like, Eddie, we just want to help you. And he's like, we're just here because we love you. And Eddie's like, yeah, whatever. He's like, yeah, shut up, suit. And he's like, all right, Padre, like, before you piss off my suit and it hurts you, like, I'm going to leave. So, yeah, obviously he doesn't say that, but that's kind of his mentality when he, you know, exits the church. And as soon as he goes outside, turns out he's being tracked by Matt Gargan. So you get this great Scorpion versus Venom fight in here, which is cool because we had Mac in the first arc as well. But now we get Eddie versus Mac, uh, which, you know, in their suits and everything. And they fight like tooth and claw. It's a great fight. I know I say that a lot, but it's obviously a reference to Venom comics. Uh, but they, they fight and it's great. And actually Mac gets the one up on him because Mac's like, hey, dude, I fought symbiotes before and I want this symbiote back. So I'm, I brought tech here to, you know, remove it from you. So he hits it with like a sonic blast and he's separating the suit from Eddie. And Eddie's like, you know, you know, help, like, you know, please help me. And the suit's like, Eddie, he hurt me. He hurt me. He's like, get it together. Help me out. So Mac picks, you know, uh, Eddie, you know, he picks Eddie up and he's holding him by the throat. He's getting ready to choke the life out of him. But the suit pulls together, goes inside Scorpion's suit 
and rips it apart from the inside, which is so awesome. Leaving just Matt Gargan, you know, exposed, facing a, a souped up Eddie Brock, who was just, you know, working with military people. And he's, you know, still like bench pressing and super buff. So now it's just two guys. And I always love it when people have superhero fights and it comes down just to the people who they are. And this was great. So you have Eddie and Matt Gargan and Eddie with one good shot, boom, knocks Matt right out. Because of course he would in a physical fight, Eddie would trash Matt Gargan, like big time. Matt Gargan is not a physical threat without his suit, in my opinion. So, um, I mean, maybe if he had a knife or something, you know, or if some poison to get you, you know, but he's he's kind of Weasley in that way. He, I don't think he's a good head-on fighter without his suit. Eddie is, though. You take away the symbiote, you still got to deal with a guy who can bench press probably 200 pounds, if not more. So um, I like that Eddie got the one up, but right as he knocked him out, he started uh, feeling lightheaded because of everything that happened in the Sonics. So he goes to pass out and he falls back. The symbiote catches him, bonds over him. It's a really great page. Like Tradmore kills it on the art on that page. Uh, but then Eddie wakes up in the church and he's got blood all over his hands. And he's like, what's going on? And he looks over and he sees the Padre. And it looks like the Padre has been beaten within an inch of his life. He is still alive. I thought when I was reading this, I was like, oh my God, he's dead. Like, I can't believe Venom, the suit, killed this Padre just because of, you know, what he said, you know, his words. Um, but it looks like he's not actually dead because he's, I think he's in the next issue, so we'll talk about that coming up soon. Um, but uh, but yeah, so this is where I'm going to end this episode with Eddie there holding the priest in his hands, uh, saying like, oh my God, what have we done? And the suit's like, you know, no one's ever going to take, you know, separate us again, Eddie, uh, which is just scary. So I, I kind of like that Mike was setting that up. I mean, even though it kind of feels like it goes against and it's kind of retconning the, you know, the, 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 cleansing, uh, the cleansing of the symbiote um, and all that, I guess Mike's rationale is that after it got cleansed, it still hung out on Flash, still, you know, had a few bad tendencies, and then uh, from time to time, and then went to Lee Price and got fully corrupted again. And like I said, I feel like that's too convenient to have, you know, the homeless guy and then Lee Price, so it had two hosts, and it's all of a sudden bad again and willing to keep secrets and be devious. So, I, I, I you know, I don't really like that it was that easy for the suit to go back to that kind of uh, existence or mentality. But I know that feeds what Mike does with the story, and he wanted to have an arc. So sometimes you, you know, you are stuck as a writer to change things enough to where you have a place to build from. Um, and I, so I'm um, again, I don't remember this arc fully. I remember at times I didn't like it when I first read it through. Then I read it again like two year, a year and a half, two years ago, and I was like, okay, this is better than I remember. So, but I still don't remember everything. So it's nice going back through this again and feeling those emotions where I'm torn. I'm like, I see what he's doing. But am I still going to like it at the end? I don't know. But for this issue, it's still, it's at least compelling. And I like it for that reason. And I love the artwork. So, uh, so that's all I'm going to talk about. There is, uh, you know, two flashback stories in this book. One of them we already talked about. It was the ending of Flash Thompson. And that was something we, we covered already. It was written by Robbie Williams, I think, who, uh, who wrote the, um, the, the Agent Flash, or I'm sorry, Agent Flash, the Space Venom uh, stuff with Flash on Earth and uh, when he came back to Earth. So he kind of wrapped up his story with, you know, the suit getting separated from Flash. And that's how it ended up on the homeless guy and went to Lee Price. So that story's in here, but we already covered it. And there's another flashback story that shows Eddie way back before, I think even before he attacked Spider-Man for the first time. But I'm going to do a separate episode on that. So that'll be coming up very soon after the next Ravencroft episode. So that'll be a nice short one we can t discuss. But this one I just had a lot to say and I wanted to show the cover gallery and I wanted to just really dive into this because I felt like there was a lot of interesting stuff here that Mike did. And even though I'm not fully on board with some of it or like some of it, I still recognize Mike's talent as a writer and I'm still willing to see if, I rem if I'm remembering this arc correctly and see if it does pay off the way I at least think I remember it paying off. So, uh, so uh, yeah, that's my thoughts on this. If you have similar thoughts or different thoughts, whatever it is, let me know what you thought of the main story, Heart of Darkness, here uh, from uh, from Mike Costa and also from Trad Moore from issue 150 of Venom. I'd love to hear your thoughts down below, and we'll continue the conversation as always down there. Thanks so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you all in the future. Peace.